Hello. So I'm just going to do a tutorial on this cute little spider and I'm going to do some dry brushing techniques and I'm also going to be using um, these art crayons and these are just some art crayons you can get on Amazon. They come in all different colors. I use the black one a lot. Um, this is usually used for distressing, making the edges, you know, black. Um, it's really awesome. I suggest um, at least having the black one for most um, of my crafts. So I, I really like this one. So if you're going to get one, I would start with the black one. So I am going to use that. I may use some of these distress inks. These are from uh, Michael's, like Joann's. They are um, Tim Holtz. And you can get these um, at any of the craft stores. And they come in all different colors. And that's great for distressing. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take him apart and show you how he assembles. So here's his little hat. So you can take the whole hat right off and all the pieces just assemble right on top. And I'm just gonna set that over here. And here's his little legs. They all just come apart and they just kind of fit on there like a puzzle. So I'm just gonna take all these off. I haven't decided what color I'm going to do him yet. I wanna say I wanna do black but then I really want his eyes to be black. Um, so I might color, paint him like a brown. So I'm thinking those are the colors I'm going to do. So then when you cut him, he's just automatically gonna cut out his eyes. So you don't have to make his eyes um, different or anything. You can leave his eyes out or you can use those pieces that cut out. So I, you could do that way where his eyes are um, kind of like left out like that, or you can put these pieces back in. It's however you want to do it. Um, I'm going to leave those pieces in um, just to see. So then you're just going to glue everything to this back piece. You don't have to do anything with this back piece if you don't want to. I may paint this um, strip here that goes into the stands. And these are the stands. Um, they are off center a little bit just because his legs kind of hang off. And so it's going to go like this. So you'll see there's an extra um, bit of uh, material here so it's not exactly in the center so just make sure that when you line these up that you line them up um, exactly like that so that they're um, that piece with the longer um, material is on the right okay so just want to explain that um, unless you're doing the um, the one-fourth the one-fourth um, version of this only has one set of stands because they're thick enough with the one-eighth you definitely want to have two stands because this is thick um, enough for um, both versions so because I don't want to make two different ones I like to have this thick enough anyways because you don't want them to tip over so you definitely want to have this this nice and long so it kind of goes in there and this fits in the slot nicely so these are um, the pieces I'm gonna just go ahead and take this piece off and I'm gonna leave that one out I don't need to do anything with that piece it doesn't need to be painted so I'm just gonna set it over here it sounds like my neighbors are outside it's a really nice day here so Definitely outside, you can hear the birds chirping. And I think I'm going to paint him maybe a brown. I think the coffee bean brown would look nice. And I'm gonna maybe um, distress him so that he has some shadows and whatnot. So there's my coffee bean. I'm just gonna go ahead and shake this up. Got some traffic going by. Apologize for that. It's gonna be a little loud. It's a really nice day, everybody's out. I'm just out in the garage, enjoying this nice day. It's so beautiful out. I'm just getting all my Halloween stuff done early because last year I ran out of time. I'm already got paint on my hands. Last year I ran out of time. I didn't start my Halloween until it was too late. Okay. Yeah, I didn't start Halloween until the end of July last year and then I just didn't have enough time to finish all the files that I wanted to get done. So I wanted to get him done last year, but I just did not have enough time before Christmas started. So this year will be the year to get more Halloween stuff done. Hopefully I won't run out of time again. So I'm just grabbing some of that coffee bean and you can use any brown for this. Um, Folk Art is another brand that you can get at um, your local craft stores. So Folk Art like this one here, um, another great chalk paint. Um, you can use that and they have some great browns so they have a lot of browns so I'm just gonna go ahead and just paint him you don't need to paint the hat because it's gonna be covered 
So I'm just gonna go through here. And these are gonna be covered up too uh, by his legs. So you don't have to paint the whole thing. So you won't even see that. This part here, I just wanna make sure that I get all here. Here we go. And I'm gonna grab some more paint. I just don't like to take too much paint at once because I don't wanna have like globs. There we are. There we go. And I'm not sure if I really need to paint that part, but you will anyways. There we go. I always like to just add a little extra paint just for good measure, just because I don't want to have a spot after I'm all done and be like, oops, you can still see some MDF. All right, so the, you don't really have to paint too much on this layer. I want to make sure I give it enough paint here. There we go. And this is just a nice brown. I just think a, a brown spider instead of a black spider would be nice. Just want to do his eyes black. And I thought that'd be kind of cute. And I'm going to lighten this up with some dry brushing. Because this is a very dark brown and I don't want it to blend too much with his eyes. And you won't see his eyes too much. We want those eyes to pop. Because he's going to have those cute big eyes. Because we want him to be a cute spider, not a scary spider. I was trying to go for the cute factor. Because spiders can be scary to some people. Alright. So there he is. And I think I'm gonna do different shades for the legs. I'm just gonna let him dry. So I'm gonna pick some different colors of brown for his legs, just so they pop. So I'm gonna grab, mm, I have a lot of browns here. I'm gonna check all my browns. I have this one here, this pine cone. That might be nice for his front legs. I'm not even gonna even clean my brush. I'm just gonna keep using that same brush just cuz. I'm just gonna grab some of that pine cone and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right on there. There we are. And that's just, I, you can pick any other paints. You don't have to use these exact paints. I'm just, in case you did, I'm just giving you the colors. But I just any of like a lighter shade would work. Okay, so those are his front legs. Give this another coat. Okay. I'll give it a little bit more. There we go. A little bit more over here. Just I wanna make sure that there's enough paint. There he is. There's his two front legs. I'm just gonna set those over here. Then we have these legs. These are gonna be the legs that go next to those very front ones. And I think I'm going to add, I'm going to add another shade, but I'm going to just kind of blend some colors together. So I'm going to do the same thing again, that same color, that pine cone, but I think I'm going to dry brush in between them so they have a little bit of a different shade to them. So I'm going to keep using that same color. There we are. A lot of birds chirping today. There we go. It's nice to listen to the birds. I'm sitting out here. Usually I have the TV on. I have a TV in my garage that I just kind of usually have something on in the background. I don't know if you guys do that. 
sometimes like something I've watched a million times that I don't have to pay attention to. Kind of just more listen to it. There we are. Just add a little bit more. I just don't like to see my brush strokes, so I just like to add a little bit more paint. There we are. So I am gonna come back and I'm going to add more to those. So, and then these are just more of his legs. Add some more brown. I'm just gonna hold these together and just do them at once. Just cause. Get them done faster. Covered with paint by the time I'm done again, as usual. I'm a messy painter. There we go. There's his legs. Come over and get those other two legs. Some more paint. Save time that way. There we go. And these, like I said before, these are just paintbrushes I get at Michael's. They're nothing exciting. Um, the ones I definitely don't recommend are those ones with like these ones. This is one I threw in the garbage. <laughs> don't get these ones. Um, the ones that look like this with the domed um, uh, bristles. The you can see the bristles just fall right out of these. I would not recommend those. So that one's still on the, that one's in the garbage next to me. Um, that one's went right in the trash. So don't get those if I, like that's just, I'm just my recommendation. I mean, you can if you want to, but I just don't recommend them because the bristles fall out. And then you don't want bristles all through your work. Okay, so now I got all my legs painted. I'm gonna go through and I'm going to just kind of highlight them a little bit. And I have my lighter shade. This is the burlap. It's just like a, Maybe like a cream color. Just gonna shake this up. And I always just use the caps when I do this. And I always just, I try to save the paint from those areas when I peel them off if I can. All right, so I'm gonna use that same brush again. And I'm just gonna dip my brush in there kind of work some of that off. Get my brush nice and dry so I can dry brush. I'm gonna get a little bit more of this lighter color. Okay, so I just move this over to the side. And I'm just gonna go through and just kind of dry, oops, put a little bit too much paint on there. I'll just dry brush this. And I'm gonna just wipe off any extra paint that I didn't want. I'm just gonna dry brush this one because I want this one to be the lightest that goes in the very front. So there's that one. It almost looks like fur. He's a furry spider. I'm just trying to go over the whole thing very lightly and just focusing on the edges more than anything. Uh, grab some more paint. I'm just gonna rub that off a little bit more. And I, I like that. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do for this one. I'm gonna come back and see if I like it when I come back and put it on there and see, hmm, do I like that? And it's really however you, you feel. I think that's pretty cute. All right. I also wanna make sure that I'm gonna dry brush him a little bit too. I still have some of that paint on my on my brush. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and just dry brush him a little bit because I don't want this too dark because I wanna be able to see those nice big black eyes of his. So I'm gonna go through and just lightly go over this with my brush, very lightly. I'm just working my way out from those 
Ah, here he is. There we go. And those edges. There we are. Almost kind of looks like you sanded it. It also kind of creates that same effect. And that lightened that brown up a lot. I really don't want him to be too, too dark. I really want those eyes to pop. All right. Make sure, yeah, there he is. There's his, his one set of legs. There we go. And you'll see this is gonna be the next set. And as you can see, there's a little bit of difference. So I'm going to change that up a little bit. I'm going to use my art crayon on that part. Make those legs pop. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna just dry brush this up a little bit. I'm gonna grab some more of that burlap color. Just kind of wipe some of that off. I don't want too much. And I'm just gonna kind of dry brush his legs just so I can get his legs to pop too. Because I don't like flat colors. I like to have them like a little bit of dimension in there. Okay, there's one. I'll grab some more of that paint. Grab a little bit more. Just make sure you take very, very little because you don't want to have too much paint on there. You can always add more, but taking away is a little harder. So there's a little bit more on this one. And you want this one to be a little bit darker than those front legs. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my art crayon and just kind of outline around there. There we go. And you're gonna see, you can see those nice crisp lines that way. And that's gonna create a nice shadowy effect. You can see each one of those legs. There he is. There. And add a little bit more. All right, and so there's one of his legs, and you can see that nice black outline around his legs. Okay, there he is. I get the other one and do the same thing again. And you're just getting just the edge, and then you're gonna blend it out. All right. And you don't have to use your finger. You can use like a sponge, like a makeup sponge. I just prefer to use my fingers because then I have more control over it. I'm gonna apply the pressure evenly with my fingers. All right, so there's, those are his front legs, the legs next to those immediate front legs. So I'm gonna bring him back over, see how I like it. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And you can see there's a different shade in between them. I just want them to be all a little bit different so you can really see each set of legs pop. So there he is looking, how oh, he's looking so far. I like that. All right, so I'm gonna set that over here to dry. And I'm gonna get to the next set of legs, these guys. And I think I'm just going to, I like the way that looks, so I'm just gonna go through and just add some of that black. Same thing again. All right, and I'm gonna add a little bit more black this time just to make these legs look a little darker than the last set. Like they're getting darker each leg because they're getting farther away. There's more shadows on them. So I'm gonna make them a little darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. So these legs kind of pop differently. So I only really want it more towards the edges and try to keep that 
lighter shade in the middle because it creates like a nice kind of rounded effect. Like his legs are actually like rounded. So keep that lighter in the middle and then just black on the edges. Okay, do the same thing over here. I think for the last set of legs, I'm gonna use the um, Distressing Ink. And those are great um, for um, distressing and adding a lot of dimension too. Those are really, really fun. The other thing is that um, they don't blend as easily as the Art Crayons. That's why I like the Art Crayons a little bit better, but they are fun to use. So there's my Next set of legs, I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna go get my spider again. Here he is. Add that leg here. So there's that. And then I'll bring this other one over here. There he is. And I might even add like more just because I wanna make that pop more. There we are. I think I might add a little bit something different. But I'm going to come back to that. I want to see how I like them first. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to get my distressing ink. I have brown. I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to add right to the edge. So you'll see a different technique. And then I'm also going to try to blend it out with my fingers. So you'll see that. And this is in the shade of brown. This is not the black. So this is going to give us a different um, color. So I'm just going to add it right to the edges. There we go. I'm going to blend it. But you can see it doesn't blend as well as the art crayons, but they are fun to use. So there's our next leg. Just for fun. Trying something new. I'm gonna blend it again. Just because these are wet and the other one is more of a solid. So, depends on how you like to blend. If you like these better or the crayons better, depends on how you like to do that. Okay, there we are. And just blend that out. So that's using the the inks. So I like to store them upside down when I store them so the ink goes right to the front of the ink pad. So, okay, I'm gonna bring my spider back. Here he is, and here's this last set of legs. You can see they're all slightly different. Let me bring this over here. And there he is. Here's our spider. And you can see each one of those legs, they really pop. All right, I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna just kind of set him over here and come back and I'm going to do the hat next. I have to do his leg or his eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna take this apart. So we have our flowers. So then here's this piece. All you have to do is just these on here so they're just the the greens so you don't have to paint the flowers because the flowers are going to go over the top and then this part um we're going to do the hat okay so deciding on the hat color i'm thinking i want to go with that purpley color again that aubergine i think that's what i'm going to do that color A lot of colors to choose from. So here's that. I'm gonna do that purple, and this is a purple that's so dark, it almost looks black. Okay. And there's our purple. It, you can tell it really looks, real. it's very close to black. Okay. Grab another brush. 
so far I've only used one brush so you don't have to keep changing your brushes a lot I mean if you're using similar colors you can just keep wiping them off and keep going but this time we're changing colors pretty drastically so I'm gonna use a new brush so here's the purple I don't always want to use black for the hat sometimes it's nice to just add a little pop of color get some nice contrast some great Halloween colors like dark purple and and maybe some like deep reds. Great for Halloween. All right. I'm not really in the Halloween spirit yet because it's only May, but I'm thinking more spring. But I can't wait. I love Halloween. Like Halloween's one of my favorites. I love to decorate for Halloween. So many fun things. But I'm already in the, I'm already thinking Halloween. I feel like you have to like get started so early for um, fall because fall is here before you know it. So, and there's so many things to do and you run out of time. So prepping in the springtime for fall and winter is like the best thing to do. Always getting started early. That's just me. Cause I feel like once those, that holiday season starts, it just time flies. So when I'm during my slow season, when I'm like springtime, when people aren't really buying a lot of stuff or doing things for the spring, I feel like spring isn't the, isn't the biggest thing for decorating. I don't know. A lot of people don't decorate a lot for spring, but I've just noticed that trend, um, at least for me. Um, but I feel like people, a lot of people decorate for fall and winter more than spring. So I like to do this during my, my slow time. Uh, to get ahead on um, those fall and winter seasons. All right, so I'm just gonna do this. So right now it is really, it is a little slow for me. So I'm gonna just get, I'm just getting right ahead with all my, my fall and winter. That way I'm nice and prepared because I do a lot of events in the fall and winter. And I feel like I'm never even prepared even if I start in the spring. All right, here we go. I even started making Christmas ornaments already. People think I'm crazy, but I think I'm gonna be really prepared once uh, event seasons start. And they start as early as September and people wanna, are already thinking um, about Christmas in September and October even. All right, so I think this is pretty good. It's a lot of coats. I just wanna make sure that none of my brush strokes are showing. All righty. So I was gabbing, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm, now I'm gonna come over to my florals. And I'm thinking I want a really nice green, but I don't wanna do like a spring green, I want more of a fall green. So I don't want a bright, bright, bright green, I want like a darker green. So normally, I do the Weeping Willow color, it's like a light green, but I'm gonna do, go with this English Ivy, which is a little darker. So you can see this, it's a much darker green. I don't wanna go with, I don't want it too dark though, I don't want a Christmas green. Um, so I'm gonna go with this Ivy color. For my spring ones, I always use Weeping Willow, which is a nice light, like a minty green, and I don't wanna go for like a spring green. Not for fall, but for like my tulips and my um, lilacs and stuff and my daisies, I'm definitely gonna go with like more of a minty green. So I'm just gonna go through, take this out. I don't know what these like bumpy things are. It's kind of weird the way that comes off. Okay, so again, I'm gonna grab another clean brush we're changing colors pretty drastically this time. I just wanna make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush for all these little intricate pieces. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through, paint these. I might, I don't know, sometimes I do them in different colors, but I sometimes I think it's nice to just stick with the same. Shall see. Some pretty little leaves. Make sure I get all those parts that might end up showing. Just, just make sure, and it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not gonna see these 
this part here because the um, daisy or the flower is going to be showing, it's going to be covering that. All right. I'm going to get this next one. And I think I'm going to also use the art crayon to also add some shadows and some dimension to this green just for fun. I love the art crayon because it makes it like spooky, kind of distresses it. All right. So that's all you really have to do for this layer is just these greens. And I think I might do these berries, maybe a shade of red, or maybe orange. I think it would be orange. So we get some nice fall colors in there. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I have my orange paint. This one is Summer Crush from the DIY Paints. Um, it's called Debbie's Design Diary, in case you're looking for this paint. This is a great orange. This is my favorite orange um, for like pumpkins and fall stuff. Just gonna grab another brush. And I'm gonna save this brush too because I'm gonna do that for the I'm gonna use that for the moon. I'm just gonna make sure. I don't want to use a big, big, big brush because I don't want to like glop the paint on this area. I have it all go over the sides. I'm just gonna stick with a smaller brush for these. Sounds like my neighbors are weed whacking. A great day outside to be doing some yard work. That's what I think I will be doing this afternoon. All right, so here's our little berries. I think these will pop really nice. I might even add a little bit of red to the edges. And I actually have a red art crayon that I think I might actually use for that. I'm just gonna some of that extra paint over here because I'm not sure how deep that goes what's going to show so I think I'm going to use my red art crayon to um, add a little dimension I think that's part of it too right here there we are and see how this is nice you don't have to worry about being a great painter um, because you're not going to see where all these come together you're going to be um, covering this with that flower so you do not have to be a great painter. So all you have to do is really just put the paint on. There we are. Okay, so there are my little berries. So you can do these all different if you want. I just chose to do these the same, but you really don't have to. So there's that. I'm gonna let that dry, set that over here. And I'm gonna decide on my flower colors now. I am like really loving the blues. I really love those blues, like that teal. Um, I really think those come out really cool. So I might, I, I keep doing those same colors over and over, but I should probably, I should change it up, but I really love them. Um, I think I'm gonna still go with those blues. I, I keep saying I'm gonna change them up, but I really like those colors a lot. Um, I think I'm going to go with that same one again. This is the antebellum blue. It's a really pretty teal. Um, you don't have to use these exact paints. Like I said before, you can, um, use the folk art brand. Um, they have them at the cra any craft store has those. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead. I always like to shake my paints up really good before I use them. All right. And like I said, just use the caps. Um, that way you're not, um, taking paint and dumping it into those little pots and wasting paint. I don't like to waste paint, so um, I just use the caps. Unless you're doing like a paint party and everybody has to have their own little individual pots and definitely do that. But I feel like it's just such a waste. All right, so I'm gonna take my little moon off and there's my little moon and there's a little bat inside it and that's like kind of the center of your flower. I thought that was kind of cute for the center of the flower. I just thought of it one day. I was like, why not have something in the middle and make it like a moon? I thought that was kind of fun. All right, so I'm gonna grab another paintbrush and I'm going to go through and I'm gonna paint this. I'm gonna do the back flower a different shade of blue. So they pop, this has too much paint on it. I'm gonna take some of that paint off. 
And there we are. I love that my neighbor decided he was gonna weed whack right now. I hope you guys can hear me over that. Alrighty. I'll grab some of that paint. And this is really covering nicely in one coat. There we go. I really love this blue. I love these teals. I just feel like this is such a great fall color. It could be a great fall or spring color, but it's it's a great versatile color. All right. I remember for a while teal was like, no, don't use teal on anything, but then teal's back again and I love it. All right, I remember the prom dresses back in the 90s and everything was teal. All right. Now I'm going to do another color for this one. I'm going to go with a lighter blue this time. And I'm thinking, I think I'm going to go with this blue. Let's see. This one is just Dixie Belle blue. Okay. It's just plain blue. Shake it up. All right, and there's that lovely lid. Okay, making a mess. Wipe off that paint. My hands are already very dirty. And I'm gonna just go through and put these caps back on because I don't want these to dry out. There we go. Put this away. I put all these back on when I'm thinking of it so my paint doesn't dry out. So I'm going to hold on to that because I'm not done. I don't know if I'm done with that yet. But there we are. I'm just going to put my caps on. Okay. So here's my blue. I'm just going to keep using that same um, paintbrush because I don't mind if they blend a little bit. It's kind of cool when they blend. Kind of creates dimension when the colors kind of blend together. And I'm also gonna um, dry brush these. And I'm gonna add some of that, that orange. That's why I don't wanna put my orange away just yet. Um, just because I think it's going to look really nice when we add a little bit of orange to the edges. It looks kind of patina. Blue and orange look really cool together. Okay. And this one's not gonna, you're not gonna really see the middle of this flower. So I'm not sure why I'm even going to the middle, but sometimes I just like to make sure I get everything. Okay. The other flower is going to cover it up. Mm, there we go. There. This is one of those paints that you definitely need to use more than one coat. It, um, very, very light. It's like more translucent than the others. So you definitely want to add more paint to this one. There we go. Okay. I just want to make sure my brush strokes don't show. There we go. There he is. Okay, so I'm gonna just set this off to the side and I do have to paint my little moon here. This is gonna be the moon. And we got our little bat that's gonna go inside our moon. And I think I'm going to get my trusty favorite yellow. 
and this one is from folk art and this one is called vintage mustard really love this color this is my go-to yellow um again you can get this at michael's joanne's hobby lobby and this is really really thick you can see how thick that is it's like it's like gooey you can see how gooey that is um so folk art paints are tend to be much thicker um sometimes not always but definitely this one all right so i'm just gonna wipe off my brush i used earlier for the orange and i'm just gonna dip it in the cap and just paint my little moon here there we are such a great yellow And there's our moon, our moon center of the slash center of the flower. I figured it can, it can work as both the center of the flower and a little moon. I just never seen that before. So I thought it'd be kind of fun. Why not? I'll just add another coat. Make sure I really get that yellow on there good. I'm gonna use my art crayon to go on the edges too, once again, but I'm gonna let that dry. So there he is. I'll set that over here to dry. And I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna use that same brush take some of that paint off and I'm going to just add a little bit of dry brushing to the edges of my teal flower and you can see it's starting to make it look like it's antiqued or like a patina you can really see that I grab a little bit more took a little bit too much paint there but you can always wipe it off if you put too much paint on. You really want to make sure your brush is almost dry when you do this. If you put too much on there, it's not going to look... See, like right there. That's putting too much on. See? There we go. And this probably isn't the best brush for dry brushing either. But make do. Add a little bit more. There we go. So there's my, if you can see that, you can see those edges. And it's nice, nice and patina-like. But I'm gonna add a little bit more, just for good measure. There we go. And I'm going to go through and do the same thing on this one. Add a little bit of yellow to the edges. And it just kind of makes it look like it's rusted or antiqued. It's very loud. I'm gonna go a little heavier on this just cause I really want that yellow to pop. There we go. So there's our yellow on this. I wanna see how I like it. Yeah, that looks really cool. So there's our, our flower. I'm gonna move it up a little closer so you can see that. And I'm gonna add that orange too. So I still have my orange over here. All right, there's our orange. 
Add a little bit of that. I'm just going to add a little bit. There we go. This is why my um, paper towels are always so dirty with paint. You just use the paper towel to wipe off any extra or even blend paints. I do a lot of that. So there's our little bit of orange. Blend it in there. There we go. So there's our orange. Now it looks really patina. You can see that. I move that up close so you can see that. There we go. And I really, really like that. It looks pretty fun. All right, let's see how it looks on our flower. Oh, look at that. I missed one of the spots. See? That's why I like to make sure before I glue anything down. All right, that looks pretty cool. I'm really happy with that. I got to go back and add that green. That's why I keep everything out still. Add a little bit of green. Here's my green. And you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just clean this off. And I'm just gonna add that green right in there. Okay. There we are. Just add a little bit more paint on there. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna grab that red um, art crayon. Real quick, I'm gonna grab that red art crayon and do some um, shading on those berries just for just to see just experiment okay and I'm gonna put my caps back on my paints so I don't knock any over either that could be bad I end up um, my table actually my leg broke on my table one time and I was painting I think it was my pumpkin last year and my paint was on my table and I lost my orange paint. So, and I have a lovely um, big stain of orange paint on my garage floor. So this is why I'm doing this out in the garage, in case you're wondering, because I make a mess when I do this in the house. So, and even in the winter, I do it out here. I just have heaters. All right, I'm just gonna make sure I keep all these caps on here. Because I make a mess when I'm painting. I'm just gonna grab that. Mm. Actually, I think I'm gonna do this color. This is like a darker orange. I think that would look pretty cool. And this has not been used yet, so it still has the plastic on it. Um, they come in all different colors. So I have pretty much actually I have used this um I like these um you can get these uh you can get every color on Amazon so I just bought the entire um collection they do have like sparkly ones I think like like a shimmery and um a whole bunch of different ones that I have not tried so um definitely see how you like them and then maybe try the other ones so I'm just gonna go through and just kind of add a little bit to the edges I think this is a good choice for this. And I'm just gonna blend, blend that out on the edges. There we are. Blend, just putting that along here. And I'm just gonna blend it with my finger. There we are. And add some nice dimension to your berries if you wanted to try that. Put along the edge here. That would be pretty cool. I'm just going to kind of rub it all over. 
And put a little bit more here. It just adds a little bit of dimension. There we go. I'm just gonna blend those in. Put some more over here. Blend it a little bit over here. And you can do the same thing with the distressing inks too. That's another option. Maybe I'll do that for the leaves. And guess what I'll do? So I'll do another um, example of the distressing inks. So there's our, our berries. And I'm gonna just kinda take my finger and just blend these out. And if you use MDF, it's pretty strong. Um, if you use um, plywood with the birch and stuff, um, it tends to be very weak and these might break easily if you're really yanking on them like I am, but MDF, you can see I'm really putting a lot of pressure on this and really pulling, and you can see it's not breaking. Um, so MDF is pretty good, but the only thing is it does tend to be, you know, toxic, so you gotta make sure that when you're cutting, making sure you're really venting properly outside. Um, yeah, just, some, just a fair warning on MDF, and it does make your machine a little gunky but it does cut really well and it's really strong. Right. I'm gonna grab my distressing inks. So, and they come, you can get these little boxes too for your inks to store them in. And I've got a whole bunch. Um, I'm looking for a green, maybe not one of these. I have a whole bunch more. I think I bought every single color they make. Um, I have all of these. I'm thinking this would be a nice one. Um, and I still have more. And I have these. None of these. Okay. And then there's also another kind of inks. And I see one that I think I'm going to go with. And they are these kinds. The They're also from Tim Holtz. These are the... They call them archival inks. So I just have another box. I have a lot of these inks. I buy them like crazy. And I think I'm gonna go with maybe this, there's this green. It's like a nice dark green. But I think I may even go with a gray color. What's that? Just to see. I'll try gray. I'll try this one just to see, experiment. Just to see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that looks really sharp. All right, I'm just gonna blend it. So I have a lot of different things that I like to buy. I'm like one of those people that loves to buy supplies, but then you're like, do I ever use them all? So I'm trying my best to try to use all the supplies I buy. So here's the gray. And I'm just taking the corner and just kind of rubbing it along the edges of the leaves and then along the edge of the stem. So there's that. I'm not sure if you can see it. And you can see those edges. And that looks pretty neat. So that's one way to also distress. You can try these lovely ink pads. All right, let's see how we like it now. Put this on here. Now we still do these black. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna move him out of the way. I'm actually gonna take my art crayon while I still have it out. I'm gonna do the edge of this moon. I'm only gonna do the outside edge. There we are, just so it pops. I'm just gonna do the outside again. I'm just gonna blend it just so that really pops and it looks kind of spooky. There we are. Here we go. Get that edge all the way around. So there's our edge. Not sure if you can see that, but it's got a nice like black outline around it. I'm gonna take a look. 
think it's gonna really pop. There it is. You can really see it. I might still add a little bit more. So I think it's too yellow right now and I want it to be more spooky. So I'm gonna bring it in a little bit more. There we are. Okay. Make that really spooky moon. There we are. Okay. There. That's really spooky. It's sticking my finger. All right. So there's our spooky moon. And I'm going to do the same thing while I have my art crayon out. I'm going to just go along and I'm going to give some shadows and some dimension to this hat with the black. Just going to blend it. Just so it kind of looks like it's got some real wrinkles in it. There we are. Put a little bit here. A little bit here. Get those edges. Okay. And always be happy with how you like it before you glue everything down. Because once you glue it down, it's going to be kind of challenging. <laughs> So I like to kind of keep piecing things together, like just kind of testing it out just to see how I like it. And if I'm like, oh, I don't like it, go back and repaint that. There we are. And get some nice shadow effects on there with my art crayons. Get that right here real good. Really want to get a nice crisp line there. There we go. And just kind of blend it out. There. So there's our hat. I'm not sure if you can see that. But you can see those nice black lines around it. Okay, so there's our hat. I'm gonna bring this back over here. So let's see how we're liking it. Move my Piece. There we go. I think I'm liking this so far. I like all the colors. All right. Okay, so now we're going to paint that bat and those eyes. Get my black chalk paint. It's just regular black chalk paint from Folk Art. Shake it up. Okay. I'm gonna grab another paintbrush. Mm, I'm grab, I'm grab this paintbrush. There we go. I'm gonna do the eyes first. Cause I put a lot of paint on my brush. There we go. There's one eye. Grab a little bit more paint. Oop. Paint all the way back down to the bottom again. Here we go. There. Now I'm going to use what's left over on my bat. There we are. So there's our bat and our eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my spider back over here. And here's his back piece. I'm gonna put that right on top. There he is, we're gonna need some eyes. Here's his little hat. Let me grab it from the bottom. And I'll let those dry for a few more seconds. I'm going to put this on. See how I like everything before I make any decisions. So far, so good. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I think I'm pretty happy with him. All right, so there's his legs. 
I make sure I get all those on there perfectly before I glue everything, but this is just kind of a placement right now. So there he is. Now we're going to put his eyes on. And then we should put our bat on. So I'm just going to arrange it. So there's that. I'm going to just set him down. Just kind of arrange these a little better. So there he is. I'm going to set him back down. I'm going to come back to him in just a second. And I kind of want to add like some like whites to his eyes. I think that would be kind of cute. So I'm going to grab some white chalk paint. And if I don't like it, I can always just paint it over it again. But I'm going to try. I'm going to see. Because you know how like when they are super cute and they do like the whole, I don't know, like the cute cartoon characters where their eyes get really big and they have like those big eyes and the little whites in their eyes. They're so cute that way. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to see if I can do it. But um, when I do that, I take the back of my paintbrush and I dip it into the paint. But I want to dip. I want to kind of go off a little bit because I want to make sure I don't have too much paint. Just make sure. Yeah, that's a little bit much. Okay. Just tap it out there. I think it'd be cute to put it like right about here. There's one. And do the other side. So that's gonna be the left eye. This is the right eye. And the same thing here. All right. I think that's good. So you just take the back of your paintbrush and just dip it on there. And I could go bigger with that, but we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll make it bigger. Make it really big. I bet I'll mess it up. There we go. I want a little bigger. All right, I'm bringing them back over. Put our little bat in our moon. There he is. Pops right in there. There he is. There's our bat. And then I'm just gonna set these in here just for a second. Let's see how they look. Move this little foot out of the way. I still wanna touch that white paint because it's not dry yet. Didn't put that in perfectly. There we go. And then here's the other one. Move his head up. There he goes. All right. So here he is. He's pretty cute. I might put more white in his eyes. I think I'm going to do that before I, um, I wrap up. Just I want those eyes. I want those whites of his eyes to be really big, I think. Like make him really cute. But um, I think I'm pretty happy with him. I think I'm happy with all the colors I chose. And everything I think he looks pretty fun all right I'm gonna get him listed um, on my Etsy and um, I hope you guys enjoy him and then I'm gonna paint the stands and I think I'm gonna do that maybe purple to match his hat and then maybe add um, the second layer you only have to paint just the edges of the second layer if you're doing the 1 8 version um, and I might just do I don't know maybe maybe that teal color maybe purple and teal for the base all right, so I'm gonna glue, and then they get glued together. I tend to use the um, Loctite Super Glue, and it's great um, for holding things, but you do have to work quickly because it dries almost instantly. So once you put something down, you don't really have much options to move things around once it dries. Like once it's dry, it's it's on there. So um, that's the only drawback is how fast it dries. So um, that's how I like to. Uh, assemble mine. Um, you can use whatever glue you like. That's just one that I use um, in case you're wondering. But there's our guy and he's all finished and I hope you enjoy him. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.